Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the great book of True Life. Now, you've probably heard of the Third Testament by now, especially if you've watched any of our videos. We've been highly promoting this book since we learned about it back in 2018. This Third Testament is the third part of the trilogy where you have the Old Testament where we learn the law. You have the New Testament where we learned love for our brother. And in the Third Testament is where we're learning light or to live as spiritualized individuals. Um, this book is the book for the New Covenant um, that we read about over in Jeremiah chapter 31 or in Hebrews uh, chapter 8 or chapter 12, that New Covenant. Well, each covenant comes with instruction. You know, Moses got a covenant and he got instructions. Then when the Messiah came, he introduced the covenant related to Passover and baptism and we got instructions on that so now that we're waiting for this so-called new covenant we have been given the instruction for it in the form of the third testament of the bible but this class is not about the third testament of the bible but it is actually about the book of true life you see right here, as we're looking at the very first page of the Third Testament, the very first words in it says, Compendulum of the teachings of the divine revelations contained in the 12 volumes of the Book of True Life, in which, according to his own words, our Lord brought us. Now, so this is talking about a completely separate document this book of true life it says that it has 12 volumes and what this is telling us is that the third testament of the bible is a derivative of this great book of true life now you can read the details of all of this in the prologue and or the introduction to the book it tells us how the Third Testament came about. And to summarize, what we learn is that from the year 1884 to the year 1950, our father through the Elijah spirit was inspiring some disciples in Mexico with the doctrine of the great book of true life. And over the course of those 60 odd years, these teachings were collected and after 1950, they were compiled in what we know now as the Third Testament of the Bible. So far, we've only really had five volumes out of the 12. And when you look in those five volumes, what you find is that it's kind of repetitive. Um, it seems to me as though these teachings were given in the form of sermons and sometime during these sermons, the information was repeated. And instead of being repetitive in the Third Testament, what they did was form the categories, what we know as paragraphs and subparagraphs and compile the data from the 12 volumes related to those topics and put them in those paragraphs making the third testament a very nice concise non-repeating document whereas the great book of life would be a huge document and a lot of which would be repeated over and over so here on page five of the third testament of the bible you see a list of the 12 volumes and up until now we've only had five of these volumes in english the 12 were originally written in spanish and up until today, we could only find five of the 12 volumes written in English. But praise the Lord, thanks to a viewer who would, would like to remain anonymous, we have now all 12 of those volumes. This individual went in and took the Spanish translation of the great book of true life and translated them into English. So now for the first time, we can go in and we can look at these 12 volumes. And I've put this on my Google Drive and I'll give you guys a link to it in the description of this video. So you can go in and you can download all 12 of these volumes to your computer. This is a very big deal, guys. I mean, the third testament is huge by itself, but to have a copy of the source document which we're going to see here contains more information is a huge deal i mean this is a big deal and i'm very pleased to be able to share this with you guys so y'all make sure y'all pray for our anonymous viewer that sent this in to us this will be a huge contribution to humanity 
especially for those of us who love the Third Testament of the Bible and Scripture as a whole. Now, let's see how we can use this great book of true life to help us to get clarification on things that we see in the Third Testament of the Bible. Like, for instance, the word Saturday is in the Third Testament of the Bible. Now, you know, our channel lately, our father has been putting on our heart to do a lot of classes on the sacred calendar. We believe that he's revealing his calendar through this channel, helping us all to understand when the correct feast days are. And when we talk about the Sabbath day, a lot of times and the difference between the planetary week, which contains the word Saturday and our father's sacred calendar in which there are no days like Saturday or Sunday, people sometimes question. And one of the viewers seeing chapter 17 and verse 79 talk about the word Saturday they got a little bit confused and thought maybe somehow this slipped through and Saturday is actually a real day on the sacred calendar because it's written in the Third Testament. But watch what happens when we look at the great book of true life. Now, so the way we use this is we look at these numbers here. It says that this passage that we're reading here from chapter 17 is coming from lesson 166 verses 31 through 35. So when we're looking at the list of the volumes, we see that lesson 166 is in volume 6. So we come to volume 6, which is teachings 143 through 174. Now, the verse that we're talking about, we see is actually the third verse in this passage. And it says, Saturday is the day that was previously dedicated to rest, prayer, and the study of the law. So over here in the great book of true life, we see that here in verse 31, which says, from the first era, I taught you to consecrate my work on the seventh day. Now, look at that. The original document says seventh day. So all the confusion immediately goes away when you understand that this word Saturday is only in the Third Testament because of those who translated this scripture. This is a translation error and we're used to that by now because we have those in the Old Testament and the Bible and even in the New Testament of the Bible. See, when our father delivers his words to his prophets, they're infallible and they're perfect. But humans are not infallible. And this document was originally spoken in Spanish and then had to be translated into English. So you can imagine that there will be translation errors. And this here is one. There are no Saturdays on the sacred calendar. When you look at the original text, it says seventh day, not Saturday. Now, that's one way we can use this document. Now, let's check out another way we can use this document besides reading it. I just got this book this morning and I haven't got to look at it too much, but I did go over to look at one of my favorite verses found in chapter 55, which is the purification of the world and humanity in the judgment. We've done several classes, even a whole class dedicated to verse 7, which says, When those chosen by me find themselves reunited round my law, the earth and the stars will be shaken, and in the sky there will be signs, because at that instance the voice of the divine spirit, surrounded by the spirits of the just and the prophets and the martyrs, will judge the spiritual and material realm. So this right here is giving us a hint as the timing of the great apocalypse. But notice here in this particular teaching or lesson, it only has two verses. Verse 6 is part of this lesson and verse 7 is part of this lesson. And I've always wondered, was there more to it? Was there more information that wasn't provided in the Third Testament of the Bible? So let's go over and take a look. These two verses come from teaching 26 verses 43 through 44. So we're over here in volume one, which contains teaching 26. And we see what the third Testament is talking about over here in verse 43. 
you see how it is actually quoted word for word here it's the exact same in the third testament however the third testament stops there when it's talking about the judgment of the material and spiritual realm but the great book of life goes on it says then the time of the holy spirit will reach its plenitude in order for you to make known to your brethren this prophecy so this is additional information that is being offered over in the great book of life and yet another great way we can use this information to understand the third testament of the bible you see something that don't make sense or if you're hoping that there's more information you could just come over to the great book of true life and find that passage and see what else it's talking about so I offer you this information in the description of this video. Look for a link that you could download these to your computer. Now, me myself, I'm actually considering printing them all out. This particular volume has 320 pages in it. Looks like volume eight has 203 pages in it. And looks like volume five has about 382 pages in it. So on an average of about 300 pages per volume, you're talking about 3,600 pages or so, but you know me, I like to have hard copies of everything and a hard copy of this book doesn't exist, at least in English. So printing it out may be the only way to get this book. But as far as the third testament of the Bible is concerned, you can find it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or Walmart or whatever and a link to a website where you can get a hardcover copy of the third testament of the bible can be found in the description of this video so there you have it all 12 volumes of the great book of life like i said i'm giving you a link in the description so you can download these for free in pdf form and hopefully soon we'll have the complete audio version of the third testament of the bible uploaded to google drive and you'll be able to download those to your phone as well I'll let you know when I get that uploaded. In the meantime, make sure you're subscribed. And if you would, go ahead and hit that like button and leave us a comment. Godspeed and Shalom.